All right. We are live. Give everybody a couple of minutes to get in here. While we're doing that, I'll clean my palette off a little bit. I'm going back to using my glass palette. I haven't cleaned up the last couple of days, though. <laughs> Here comes somebody. Say hello. Say hello, somebody. I meant to do this stream yesterday, but I had a, an accident. So. Didn't quite recover from that till this morning. A little bit. Still pretty sore, but I'm okay. Say hello. Say hello. All right. Yeah, let me wipe the palette off here and we'll get started. <laughs> okay, so this video will actually show up on YouTube in two parts, but we're going to do it all in one part, hopefully. So we're going to start off here with some black gesso. I'm just putting on a little paper plate here. We're going to do uh, World's Over Acrylic. A little four scene. You may or may not have seen the uh, work in progress yesterday of uh, another one that I did, but I thought I'd do this one so you guys would see how that how that went, how that got done. So okay, if you guys are commenting, I cannot see it for some reason. Pretend like you, like I can. The comments aren't coming in for whatever reason. It does that sometimes. Facebook Live is not too great about stuff like that. All right, so let's start off with. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to paint some trees in here. Now, I don't usually paint vertically. I've done a few paintings of my summer girls in vertical. Usually I don't do it that way though, but I'm going to do it today because I'm going to paint a bunch of trees. So uh, usually when I paint trees, I start off upside down and that's what I'm going to do today. So we're going to take mostly white gesso. Just going to make a little puddle over here. And we're going to add just the tiniest, tiniest bit of black to that. Because I don't want to move... These first trees are going to be small trees back in the background. You don't have to be too, too fancy with those. You can put as many as you want. It's usually a pretty good idea to put more than you think you want because you're going to paint over some of those. Hey, Pat. Okay, now I can see somebody's comments. Here you were first one, Pat. All right, so we're just going to continue to add trees here for a little bit. I know you don't want them all the same height. And again, this is just gesso. Let's add a little bit of that's not too much. Mm -hmm. 
Now a lot of these I'm going to paint over as I move forward. You'll see that as we go. Give me questions. Just put them up there. I'll look back in a minute. Answer them. So this is just acrylic gesso. And again, this is just the underpainting that's going to go on. A lot of this will get covered up, but I don't know what's back there. I'm going to have a couple little branches here and there, not too much. They're off in the distance, you're not going to see too much back there. So yeah, I, I fell down a flight of stairs yesterday, so <clears throat> I wasn't feeling too good last night. <laughs> so I couldn't do my video. But I'm pretty okay today. A little sore, but not too bad. I'm on my way down to start the video, start the stream, and I don't know what happened. I just slipped and down I went onto the concrete. Now, I see a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to make their trees straight. I don't do that because I ain't seen no straight trees very much. The ones I see are telephone poles. Hey, Diane. Calling. Now again, some of this a bunch of this stuff's gonna get covered over, so that's okay. But a lot of it's gonna shine through and that's gonna be nice. It'll be nice when we set this up. Now I've got another painting sitting over here on the side, so some of this will be dry before I ever get get done but so my we're painting here for a scene oils over acrylics and we're gonna have the right about here is where the sunshine's gonna be coming through the forest all right that's enough of that I guess for those now we're going to move up to the next level of trees. We're going to, the trees are going to be a little bigger. And then we'll come back and paint some branches on them. So I'm going to move to a round brush. I'm going to add this brush nice and broken in here. Let's see how this looks. Piece of it needs to be a little bit darker. All right, let's try that. I can leave that one there. Do another one. A couple of these back here in the back. I'm going to add some branches and stuff to those. I'll make that a little bit longer. A little taller. This one a little bigger. If you have any questions, just put them up there. I'll catch them momentarily. I'm turning this round brush as I'm pulling it down. You might wonder why I'm pulling it upside down instead of right side up. It's easier for me to do the brush stroke that way. Because 
When you pull down, a lot of times what happens, you pull down and you move your hand, and that's going to really make you really kind of crooked. So if you just pull your whole arm straight down, do another one. Let's see, let's do one right here. Let's split a tree. Let's do like... Let's paint the trunk in here. these little branches in. It's a little, it's a little bit tricky with a round brush, but not too bad. All right. Three on that side. We got this tree to be a little bigger. Hey, Peter. This is pretty neat the way this works out with this acrylic. You can do, you can use this acrylic uh, under oils for all sorts of things. Okay, let's put it like. Put another one. I drive around looking at trees a lot when I'm sitting at stoplights and stuff. This is pretty neat. All the different things you'll see. Put as many of these or as few of these as you want. You know, it's up to you. What you want in your painting. Okay. Let's knock out these other couple trees and then we'll put in some bigger ones. Well, you know what? I think if we do this, we'll, we'll do a little bit of the background for our next. So let's do that. A bit of the background. This with a flat brush. I just prefer doing it with a round brush because I can go ahead and just slap a few branches in here and there while I'm going. I've also been known to save all the branches to the end, but then you got to switch back and forth in between paint again. 
Da 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 da. These trees are young and healthy. All the branches are kind of pretty much going up, upward, upward, upward. And a lot of that's going to get covered. All the branches will get covered up as well by different things. Let a hello. Uh, hey, Sonny. Hey, Peter. So before the end of the year, we'll, the fourth year in a row, done about 100 paintings during out the year. I'm sold about half of those. A wide variety of subjects. I don't paint the same subject very often. But I like to paint forests when I'm just wanting to try to relax. And today, after yesterday, I need to relax after after that. Kind of make another little puddle here. Let me see. Let me put some put this over here. Yeah, that'll be okay. Okay, this looks pretty good. Put the so we're gonna put some leaves in for the background first. So we'll do that. Let's do that, and then we'll start putting the bigger trees and the four scape for foreground in. So we're just gonna take a napkin, nothing up my sleeve, just a regular old napkin. And this has got some some white and some gray, a little bit. A little bit of words both. I think I'll turn this over to do this. Yeah, I like that better for this part anyway. Now all this stuff will show up as background as we go.
<laughs> Let's add a little bit more gray to this. Add some black. We'll see how that goes. that stuff up here in the front is going to look, you know, kind of bushy, things back there. We're not too worried about any of this that, that tracks over the top because we're going to be covering this with oils anyway, so. All right, let's pick up a little bit darker. Let's try this. up here to create these closer closer leaf structures. Hang you on know, guys, I'll take a look here in just a second. See if you have any questions. Let's see. So we're doing a little acrylic thing here, and then we're gonna put, we're gonna do oils over the top of this in a minute, in a little while, not right away, but shortly. Let's that's good enough for that for right now, I think. All right, let's put some bigger trees in. And for the bigger trees, I think I'll just use this brush. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I like this brush. Let's go right here. This is just black gesso. So you know, see I'm using a flat, so I can't really Draw that out, those lines out the way that I did with the round brush. But we'll do what we can. And then we'll switch back. something mystery just for the heck of it. All right, let's put another one. I think I'll switch brushes though. I don't want this brush. Let's use this flat. It's a little bit bigger flat. It's gonna be a bit big, bigger tree. Let's just use that as a guideline. I'll pick some 
I'll do the rest of it with a flat, I mean a round brush in a second. So let's do one more. Let's do <coughs> let's do one more right here on top of this one. This is just the underpainting, so I'm not committed to every, anything or everything at the moment. So let's do a little bit more with these trees now. I'm switching to the round brush. I haven't gone back to the strip liner yet. Just places where you're painting over other things you're going to create depth in your painting I found somewhere between somewhere somewhere north of 13 levels of, of uh, layering is what people those paintings seem to take off when I'm when I'm at shows and stuff. Those are the ones that people want, oh, like all that depth. Nobody ever says that. It's just just the way that it works. It's just the way it happens. All right. Let's see. Hey Deborah. No questions yet. Did I miss a question anywhere? Quit. Nope. Hey Brian. Okay, I think I'm caught up. You see, we've got a pretty thin line there, even with this this size round brush. So it's just a matter of keeping it turned, keep turning it as you're pulling it, keep it moving. I'm actually painting this with my weakest hand, but it's okay. Okay. All right. 
Enough of that. Okay, let's put some more foreground in with a napkin. With another napkin. Paper towels, whatever, whatever they are. And I think like right in here on this side, maybe we'll have some water on this side. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just put a bush there. I don't know. No, why not? Let's just do that. Let's just do this. Actually, you don't even really need to dab this part if you decide you're going to landscape this like I am. You can just paint it black if you want. If you don't feel like fooling with it. It's up to you. It's up to you. I'm just using up the paint that I have left. Get us going. That should get us started. All right, so we'll, any questions, anybody? While we're waiting for this to dry, it shan't take long. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what, I got another one over here that's already done. We can work on that one while this one's drying. So let's do. All right, so let me clean off the palette here. I'm just going to toss that little trash can thing away. Let's get some Indian yellow. Maybe okay, get something out. I want to put things on here. I'm going to use some both paintings, maybe. I'm using Gamble in 1980 Indian yellow. Doesn't really matter which one you use. And some cad orange, maybe. Well, let's see. Let's not, we won't need that. Let's see. It's maybe. Let's use some lizard and crimson on this one. And maybe a little bit of. Let's let's use ultramarine blue. No, let's, let's use yeah, let's use ultramarine blue. I need to use this up anyway. Okay, ultramarine blue. So we'll work with that. All right, I'm gonna set this one aside because it's still drying. We we'll use this one that I did before we started streaming. I think we'll add a little bit of water in this one. Then we don't have to add to it in the other one. Okay. All right, let's do this. So let's just get a one inch brush and some of this Indian yellow. We haven't put any any medium on this at all yet. Doesn't mean we won't. But 
not yet. Spread this out nice and thin. And already you can see that the background trees are, are pushed way back. Yeah, you know, just a touch of titanium white right there in the center. We'll add some more to that in a minute. This Gavlin 1980 Indian um, Yellow is a little more orange than the Bob Ross color. What is this? Dust or something. Alright. I'm not going to clean the brush. Just going to go into the brush. I can see some green crimson. And now, since we're not moving medium, you gotta kind of move that stuff around. Use a little elbow grease. Or if you want, you can add a touch. You guys should do that. I'll show you. But just a touch of linseed oil. And that'll, of course, help you move it around easier. I don't know if we're gonna use that ocean rain or not. Let me see. Clean the brush and then we'll we'll blend all this. Da, 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 da. So we haven't really had to do any highlighting yet, but we will. We will shortly. Let's just start right here.
Let me bring some of this color down, just to, not much, just enough to clean off the brush. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of titanium white to this to highlight this. Just a little bit for now. Now up until this point we've been putting transparent colors on. So now we're going to, titanium white is the first opaque color that we're adding. We're going to draw tree branches and stuff over that, but it's, this is important to realize because we're going to come in here now and kind of do this, this number. Well, let's see, I don't want to do that yet. Yeah, I guess I will. Adding some sun streaks here. And we'll add some more later, but okay. All right. So these trees, these back trees, we've pushed them back already. So now we're just going to work on the ones in the front here. These three in the front. And I'll tell you about a few decisions we're going to make as we go. Let's get a filbert. Because if I didn't use a filbert, y'all might think I was kidnapped by aliens. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's use some burnt umber. And a little bit of uh, sienna, I think. I don't think I need too much of this. Still nobody there. <laughs> okay. No questions. I'll probably use more sienna than than burnt umber on this, but just say no. Just say no. All right. So let's get this. Let's, so now the question for these two is, do you want the sunbeams to be in front of those trees or in back of these two front trees? And I want them back behind, I want it back behind the trees because that's going to add another layer of depth. So I'm taking this dark burnt umber color and I'm applying it to the shadow side of the tree. Now, you can see here, it's just those sunbeams are kind of, you know, diluting the, the color. So we're just going to take a Q-tip and just wipe those off. Just wipe that down just a little bit, just to take the paint off of it for that, that lighter color. And as long as we're up here, we'll do this one too. Sip a myrtle less the Q-tip, so let's get another one. There's not a whole lot of paint on there, but it's enough. You can also use a, a paint eraser. Wilson Bickford sells those there. I think, I think Hobby Lobby sells them too. I don't use one, so I don't know. All right, now I'm back to that. Now, I'm also going to take that dark of this tree branch. For now. And now let's do this side. Now this side we're on the opposite side because the sun the beam is on the sunbeam is on the opposite side. Pretty 
pretty simple. Come back here, paintbrush. All right, so, so now this tree, we have to decide if we want to move this tree up closer or if we want to leave it further back. Now, if we leave it further back, then that means we're not going to bring the, the uh, we don't have to do anything else really to it. The sunbeam's going to pick up on it, right? We're going to need to add some more leaves in here, but that's okay. We're going to do that in a minute anyway. So, I think we'll bring this one forward too. So let's take it on this side of the tree. Let this feel right. And again, that'll pull this tree forward. You don't have to do it for all the branches because you know the branches are at different different levels in the forest. So. All right. I think that I think that's gonna work for now. All right. Let's put the path in, and then we'll do the opposite side of the trees. So let's just take the. Let's see, I'll just use a filbert for that too. Let's take some a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of white. I think. And we'll start off back here. Just. Bringing it forward. Now, as we bring it forward, we're just going to add a little bit more brown, Make it a little bit darker. I want to get this in because we're going to start putting brush and stuff in. A little more brown. Make sure you keep those lines horizontal because if they're going crooked and wonky, they'll look odd. sienna and a little bit of white. Add to this. Just filling in that a little bit. All right, now let's now we want to blend that. Fairly simple to do, fairly simple to do. Clean the brush. All right. Okay, let's mix up some forest colors here. Let's get some. Uh, let's start off with some sap green, I guess, for the undertones. And then we might come back with some more yellow here in a minute. Maybe some orange, maybe some red, or maybe some of all the above. We'll see. Let's get some of that. And we could add a little bit of blue to that from the blue that we already have. So let's, I'll tell you what, let's take a little bit of that, a little bit of lizard crimson, a little bit of blue. Let's use that as our, as our color. Let's just try that out, like, right here. Oh, yeah, that's nice and dark. Right. 
again. Now back here, we're gonna we're gonna put some of this back here, but not as much. Some up in there. We'll do some of that when we do the trees too. Not a lot though, just tapping some back in here and there. Here and there. Now this has a little more green in it than blue or red. Since we're doing the undertone, it's, it doesn't really matter. The shaping so much doesn't matter so much. So much. Okay, there we go. Let's do this on this side too. I'm touch that up in my highlight. Yeah. So green and some blue and some crimson. And we still haven't highlighted the trees, but so we'll get that. We'll get, we'll get to that. the road yet either so these are just getting in all the block blocking everything in that we want where we want it and again you could add some medium to your brush and it'd be a lot easier to do that but Lay that brush aside for a second and pick up my filbert again. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of Indian yellow, and a little bit of sienna, just a touch. Just enough to highlight this side of the tree. So the sienna, the yellow is creating that, you know, light off of the off of the sunshine. Off the sunshine, so I'm gonna kind of let it go dark there because we don't really want that in there. So we can even paint a little bit of this here and there. Just add a little extra something, and then we'll see what we did on that side too, don't we? Let's finish putting the leaves in, the undercoat for the leaves, and then we can just work on nothing but highlighting. So here we go. Uh, we'll just use that same color. Blue, green, red. Just a nice dark color.
Maybe just don't get it back here not much. Alright, let's clean your brush. And we can start off finishing up highlighting. So I'm gonna let that brush sit for just a second. And we're gonna start off highlighting this one single branch right here. So we'll go to the uh, round brush. Not this one though. Not this one. Alright, we'll use this one. Alright. So now there is there is paint on the canvas, so we got some medium here that will So we'll turn this upside down again, just so I can reach it better. A little too much medium, a little, too little paint. So now we're pulling this out to a lighter color into that yellow, because it's back in, it's kind of back in the glow a little bit. Now we don't want to try to pull all of that background up to the back, from the back. I just want to pull a little bit. Like that. All right. Oh, here it is. So now we're going to bring our other highlighting color, which is cad yellow, into the mix. It's probably not enough, but it'll have to do for right now. We mix this, this with just a little bit of medium. And pull along just along the edge of that branch before we start putting color in. All right, good enough. I'm going to add some dark to this now, but not as dark. Cad yellow with a little bit of liquid white. And let's start working these branches. Work right here around this. Start to run out of paint, which I sort of have on both sides of your brush. Go back and reload. Don't, don't just keep thumping it in the paint because that's not going to work. But the harder you thump it, the, the more that it's going to smear around. A little bit of this in here where the sun's shining through. And then we'll just kind of work it back up into the trees. Less and less and less. Thank you. 
in more height. Now pay attention when you're reloading your brush. If you're picking up if you're picking up paint, which so far I haven't because I don't have any medium underneath of it, then um, make sure you clean your brush out. the medium from this now and just regular straight up cad yellow over the top of that darker color that we put in over here all right now over here we're going to go back to a little bit of medium maybe if i can find it where to go here it is i'm going to tell you what let's do some of this first trees where we did some of that. A little bit right there. I'm just adding some shadow right in here. Just kind of coming around the bend. I like that. This part right here, though. Put a little bit of highlight on that upper branch and then we'll work on this area right here, which is the water area. Oh, let's see. That's all we want right there. Just that little bit. All right. Let's go back to this blue. I don't think I need a whole lot of that, but I might be wrong. I'm going to hold this so that it doesn't move. Let's start adding this water. there in a second.
I'm just blending around the paint we got already. We got a little bit of that green in there, which is what we want. Clean this brush. We should be should be about it for that brush, I think. Yeah, let's see. Take the paper towel. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of shoreline. Then we'll, I think we'll, be, we'll add some shoreline and some waterline. I think we'll be just about there. Let's do that with a knife. Uh, let's see. Just take some burnt umber. And keep this straight. Going back and forth horizontally. in it like that. Let's kind of can't paint without paint. Just like that. All right, now we want to add the water lines. So we'll pull that out flat. We're going to need a little bit more than that. And you could opt to pull some of this color down if you wanted. I think I won't do that. I think I'll change my mind. So we're going to change the painting right here real quick. Back to this one inch blood brush. Let's just add another layer of depth. All right, now let's put them. Now let's put them in. Where's my small brush? Really? Oh, here it is. Just barely out of my reach. Let's say, let's say, like, and then with that, I think we'll call it done. Although I think I want to smooth a little bit of this real quick. I can do that. I just want, where was it? Right here. Right here. I just want to smooth that just a little bit. And we can take this and all right. And with that, we're done. Just like that. 
Alright guys, thanks for watching. This will be up on YouTube in a couple days, but there's another, I don't know, close to 100 videos on YouTube if you'd care to watch them. Ben Stiver's Fine Art on YouTube. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.